Hello and uh, welcome my dear friends. Welcome to another episode where I review vintage beauties. Today I have for you one of um, my better finds and I found this wonderful wonderful Mont Blanc in uh, the wild. I bought it in a lot of fountain pens and I bought it at a steel guys so I present to you a Mont Blanc 134. I presume it's from the late 1940s and early 1950s. I bought it at a steel guys because it was part of the lot and the price per unit let's say uh, was uh, 250 lays. So this beautiful thing cost me 250 lays, the equivalent of 50.83 euros or 56.32 US dollars. So an incredible, incredible price for a beautiful celluloid made by Mont Blanc in uh, the late 1940s. First of all, let me tell you something about this particular pen. Well, I bought it as it is. Probably you can see it lacks the clip. But um, I'm not so sure that this is a thing with the models from the late 1940s. You must know that those items were made in the wartime period when um, were lacks of materials and uh, some of them were made with the steel nibs because gold uh, was um, a restricted material. Uh, it was an important material for the German war effort. So um, some were made without clips and uh, this particular model had a pipe papyrus type clip I will uh, leave a photo with uh, that type of a clip I need to tell you guys that some clips originated from other Mont Blanc um, series of pens and during war times parts were used as available and mixed to at least come with a functional pen so let me show you this pen it's a pretty basic and pretty simple and this was the 13X series back then. So the predecessor of the Mont Blanc 144. And um, let me show you guys. I have here a 144 from the beginning of the 1950s but also a 146 just for a size difference. But I will concentrate on the 144. So look at both of uh, the pens. You can see the straight design of the pen from the 1930s because the design originated in the 1940s, although this is a pen from the 1940s, I presume. And this is the new model that replaced the 134. This is the 144 from the beginning of the 1950s. And you can see almost the same dimensions. This is a little bit longer. But the cigar shape of this 144 Meisterstück. Also this, some models had the Meisterstück engraved at the top of the cap, not uh, the case of this one. You can see that both of the logos are made from casein and they have this interesting uh, patina. I'm trying to zoom a little bit on them for you to see better, yes. Uh, and for you to see even better, I have a modern logo from uh, Meisterstück 146 from uh, 1983 and you can see the difference. Basically guys, 
when you find a Mont Blanc and it has uh, this ivory patina of the logo, you must know that you have a pretty valuable Mont Blanc. Okay, and uh, if we are to compare both of them, let me show you also their names. And interesting enough, also this has uh, an ink window. It's not visible because I did not disassemble it to clean it. But I just want to show you the names side by side. So pretty much the number four name is present on both of them. Although on the, um, let's say, the one from the beginning of the 1950s, it seems to be larger, but it is the same number four nib and when we speak about the feeder we can see we have the same feeder this is why i believe that this 134 is a variant of the late years of production so probably even from the beginning of the 1950s probably one of the last models of the 134 and um, it shows in the lack of the clip so not all of them had uh, all their parts this is one theory guys the other theory is that uh, someone uh, took it during uh, its lifetime and forgot to put it back so <laughs> this is also a possibility stay tuned on my channel because i will do a comparison between the 134 the model from the 1930s and the cigar shape 144 uh, the model that, repl that replaced this one so stay tuned guys now let's concentrate on our 134 and i will e zoom even more on it so i hope it will focus sorry guys about this yes you can see some discoloration of the material right over here and this means definitely it is a celluloid in time some of the celluloids develop this uh, translucent um, side of the material and let me show you the wonderful one three four thermically engraved at the back of the turning knob And it is a piston filler. And it has also a interesting part here that uh, we saw also on the Mont Blanc 334 and a half. And I will leave a link of that pen over here. Now let me show you about this part. So I believe that this gives us access to the telescopic filling mechanism. I'm not so sure. Or at least of uh, the barrel to to clean it. Let me see. I uh, don't want to break it, guys, but I want to show you as good as I can. So, like this. And probably, yes, I think I, I, I will show you. So, this is the piston. And um, this is one way to disassemble it I'm sorry about uh, the the zoom guys so this is the telescopic filling mechanism it looks like this I don't know why this camera doesn't focus I'm quite frustrated about this so this is the telescopic filling mechanism let me try to zoom on it okay now you can see it for yourself. And it's frustrating that it doesn't focus. Sorry about this, guys. I'm uh, really sorry. Maybe now you can see it now. <laughs> sorry, I will put it like this. Yes, like this. And it gives me access to clean this 
ink uh, window that should be right over here and uh, why not guys i think i will clean it i use um, some um, this type of uh, cotton let's see so this i usually use this one and um, gently insert it in the celluloid celluloid is very and no <laughs> sorry so it uh, it has another chamber it does not allow me to reach that uh, ink window that it's present right over here i think so definitely i can't reach it but i can still try to use a syringe and probably i will do that guys so i will pause this little video and i will use a syringe to insert water here and to see if i can uh, show you the ink window and maybe compare it with the model ink window of the 144. So bear with me for a second, guys. I will uh, try to get a medical syringe and uh, I will see if I can reach there. Let me see. So I have here a syringe, a medical syringe, a medical needle, not a blunt needle. So if you use it, be careful, guys, because you can hurt yourself. I will put this later. Let me zoom out. Okay, like this. And yes, let me give you a little view of what's on my desk. I have a glass of water right over here, guys. And I hope that I will uh, do the right thing. I really want to show you how I do this. I try to be as gentle as I can with the vintage ones. Uh, sometimes I don't know what I'm doing and I hope I won't damage a pretty, pretty valuable piece. So I'm just trying to see if I can insert the needle here. Yes, and I can do that. Okay, now... I will gently push on it and I hope yes you can see the ink flowing and probably I need to do this more I will make a mess because also the ink is dripping from this part but maybe I can show you the ink window so this is a part of the procedure and yes guys i'm uh, uh, quite happy to show you that ink window look at it you can see it i hope you can yes i definitely can see it and let me show you also on the 144 because it's pretty similar but the one for the 144 has that green uh, ink window you can see them side by side like this yes it appears that on the old version is a little bit longer the ink window but stay tuned guys because i will do um proper comparison between those uh, two models and of course i did a mess what a wonderful wonderful thing sorry about this i have a tissue right over here i hope i will uh, take all the things so it is a clever model i already said on the other videos uh, what a clever system to get inside of the barrel and uh, to clean it on the mont blanc models in comparison with the pelicans you yeah, you can reach also this part by uh, taking out the nib, but not on the Mont Blancs. On the Pelicans, you can unscrew the nib and reach this section. But look, they've already thought of it back in the 1930s. This is a design from the 1930s. And why not, guys? I'm uh, pretty sure that this piston... I'm not so sure about the end of it. It does create a vacuum here, but I'm not so sure that this is functional. 
I'm pretty sure it needs a restoration. I will uh, do the writing sample, um, just inking it. And uh, probably before I will do that, I will um, take the needle again and uh, do another cleaning. Uh, okay, so I have here this. I usually draw the water from um, this. I will use the same water because uh, it's uh, clean enough. Okay, let me try to, okay, like this to fill the syringe. And I will repeat the same thing. Let me put uh, this part here and this part here away from the water. And again, gently, I will insert it right in the middle. I don't want to break something in it. And I will repeat the same procedure, but this time I will hold the pen like this. And you can see the drops of ink. It was quite dirty inside, probably from the years of use. And you see the coloration of the water. And it still drops. Uh, let me turn it. And now you can see the beautiful ink window. Just like this, guys. It is pretty, pretty wonderful. Um, I will pause this little video just to clean the space over here <laughs> because it's pretty dirty. And then I will return with it. We will um, leave its dimensions on the screen. And also I will do the writing sample. So stay tuned, guys. <laughs> well, uh, sometimes, guys, it can be a messy, messy procedure, but this is part of the fun of uh, collecting fountain pens. And um, you must be very gentle with them when you disassemble them. Um, and you can see this is a pretty fragile material. And I'm trying to zoom on this part. You can see that this celluloid is uh, slightly discolorated right over here. And um, I've done a pretty amazing job of uh, cleaning the ink window. It's uh, quite, quite nice. And uh, guys, by the way, I use the syringe to create a pressure inside of it, especially with that a needle but it certainly has a surface here that prevents me for from introducing this little uh, stick of cotton i will uh, gently insert the stick of cotton right over here and i will try to clean it like this now i am putting the stick here no pressure on the material and I will put it just the way I found it. So this is a telescopic uh, piston. And it was present only on the Meisterstück from the late 1940s the, and the beginning of the 1950s. And I'm pretty much sure that it was available only on the Meisterstück line. Okay, now I'm putting it back. A pretty clever system, guys of uh, cleaning it and easy dis disassemble it and like this okay okay and now i will put back the cap so it goes like this interesting that we still have visible a part of the ink window so probably this is the version with the long ink window and this is the pen it is a beautiful pen and again i've uh, got it for a steal 
Uh, I'm not so sure what is the current market value of such a piece, but uh, I'm pretty much sure that uh, it uh, could reach uh, 1,000 euros or 1,000 US dollars. I'm not so sure. Please correct me in the comments. It is uh, a beautiful 134. Okay, now like I promised you, I will leave its dimensions on the screen and then we will do the writing sample. And uh, I'm sorry that I'm telling you at the end of the video, but 134, this uh, is part of the series 13X and 1 stands for Meisterstück, the first line, and 3, I believe, uh, for, uh, that it has a piston filling mechanism. And the four is the size of the nib. And I found on the internet an in pretty interesting photo with the series 132, 134, 136, 138, and 139. And uh, I will leave that photo on the screen. So this is uh, 134 with a number four nib. Okay, let me put it like this, guys. And like I told you, I will leave its dimensions on the screen. And next we will do the writing sample. So I will slightly change the angle of the camera like this, guys. Okay. There's a little stain over here. Let me use a small tissue to clean it. Okay. And now I have here my notepad. Let me see. Sorry for this, guys. I'm not wearing a t-shirt. Uh, it's very, very hot in uh, my room. Uh, you probably know the heat wave in Europe. Uh, although I'm filming this pretty early in the morning, it's still very hot in my room. But um, I will move on with the video. Sorry about this. So, okay, I have here my notepad this will be all right let me take out the syringe and the other stuff from here um being a mont blanc let's use a mont blanc ink a royal blue ink i was thinking of my uh, parker quick ink but uh, no i think i will use the royal blue from mont blanc i have also the parker quick ink if this is a lubricated uh, ink in comparison with the royal blue ink, I prefer the quick ink when I'm using piston fillers, old piston fillers, but now I won't fill it up. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure it needs a little bit of a service with that telescopic filling mechanism or maybe a new corkscrew. I'm not so sure about it. So... Mm, if I don't know how to operate it, I will leave it in the hands of a professional restorer. So, mm, what I am trying to say to you guys, if you have an old piece like this, and um, it's not uh, uh, the value of money, but uh, it is a rare piece, a part of the Mont Blanc history, and if it reaches your hands, you, um, I recommend that you don't do the repairs yourself because there's a chance you might uh, break a part of history. And believe me, I am telling this to you because I've ruined some rare fountain pens, not a lot of them, but uh, three pieces. And this was at the beginning of my fountain pen collecting when I was very curious when I thought that uh, I can repair all by myself. Don't do my mistakes, guys. Um, sometimes uh, try to, to do lessons on more common old fountain pens, um, but not on the rare ones, because um, <laughs> you will have a guilty conscience. Okay, <laughs> let's move on. Sorry about this. Uh, this will be a long, long video, but um, it is of an iconic piece. 
of a beautiful, beautiful piece. Okay, I told you that I will use the Mont Blanc Royal Blue ink. Let me put some ink here. And I already told you guys, now I'm seeing this. So this is the feeder is called the ski slope type feeder and it is specific of the beginning of the 1950s this is why i think that this is a later production of the 134 because this was um, um, produced the previous models with a pretty much simple uh, feeder without those um, little drains you can see those drains those two drains over in the center yes they weren't present on the uh, previous uh, versions of this 134 so uh, by the way <laughs> this type of a feeder is my favorite feeder in the history of Mont Blanc a wonderful ebonite feeder okay let me dip it in ink like i told you and i hope that this feeder will hold enough ink i'm just removing the excess of ink i will leave uh, the excess there i will leave the bottle okay now i have this little tissue i'm trying to remove only the ink on the grip section and guys what do we have here we have a mont blanc meister stuck and now i'm dipping it again in ink just okay like this uh, i have here a mont blanc meister stuck this is a one 34 okay i presume that this model is from the late 1940s and early 1950s and i already shown you the feeder this is the reason that uh, i'm uh, dating this 134 at the later uh, stage of uh, production the material is celluloid a wonderful casein logo over here the system system of filling filling system is a telescopic piston it's a copying piston filler. It is equipped with a wonderful two tone 14 carat nib, 14 carat gold nib. Now I will dip it again in ink, guys, like this. Because I want to show you, and maybe a zoom will be in order. Yes. I want to show you. Uh, if we have a flexible nib, so I'm testing it. We have a little, little variance, but I can't call this a flexible nib. So no flex. Amazing. Because usually those have uh, a little bit of flex. Let me do also a nail test. Sorry about my finger and yes the tines are pretty uh, well put <laughs> okay so no flex to it it seems to be a pretty juicy one i'm sorry that i don't have um oh sorry about this guys this happens let me dip it again in ink but it seems like a pretty juicy one hmm uh, 14 karat gold nib and it writes like an F for a fine nib fine so no flex probably no um, line variance so here no pressure and here I'm starting to apply pressure on the nib and you can see no visible line variance 
I'm pretty curious. It should do the signature quite well. Yes, no problem with the signature. But I'm curious to see the reverse writing. Reverse writing. And I'm pretty amazed. Uh, no um, scratch. Uh, in reverse writing, it writes almost like an EF in comparison with the F it usually writes, or maybe also in F. <laughs> I'm not so sure about this, guys. And now for the final part. Why not? <laughs> I have here the, I must try also this thing. I'm sorry, guys, but I'm curious to see how the other ink uh, works. Uh, okay, I'm trying to clean this as good as I can. Probably it still has a little bit of Mont Blanc ink. But I'm curious to see how it writes with this one. Okay, remove the excess. And from the grip section like this. Okay, this was a messy, messy video. And now let me write with the Parker Quick Ink and tell you about the fox. So, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So, it writes pretty cool. I'm um, not pleased because it has a little bit of a scratch feeling, but um, I prefer smooth nib, of course. But a pretty good performer. The nib is doing quite uh, nice. I'm trying to see. No, definitely no flex to it. So the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. No um, difference between the two types of inks, but this is. Um, quite expected because this is an F nib and usually when you use a lubricated ink it shows when you write uh, with a broader nib S so pretty much a good uh, pen for its time a really uh, a wonderful Meisterstück this was its uh, review and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it guys I'm sorry it took so long but it was very important to show you how easy you can clean uh, this type of a pen of a vintage pen tell me what you think this is an amazing add to my collection please stay tuned on my channel because you will see a comparison between the 134 and the model that replaced it in the 1950s the 144 so have a wonderful day wherever you are my dear friends i hope you've enjoyed the review of a vintage beautiful Mont Blanc. Tell me what you think about it. I will see you again in the next episode. Till then, bye bye, my dear friends, and God bless you all.